Hey everybody, Gizmo here. I've got my drink. Hopefully you've got something of your own. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're doing a very special uh, non-live streaming version of this. Let me cheers you real quick. Cheers! Mm -mm -mm. Some good stuff there. Um, today we're doing a special non-streaming version of um, something. And what it is, is that I picked up recently, for my birthday actually, um, months ago... But it just arrived, which is uh, Folklore, The Affliction. And uh, I do want to do an unboxing. I've got Folklore, uh, the main box. I've got um, this Dark Tales expansion, which we'll be looking at also. And then I've got uh, the Expanded Miniatures box set. And so we'll be looking at all of those. Uh, Pikachu is very excited. We've been talking about this for a while. Um, we did do a version of this earlier. Unfortunately, that video had no sound because I neglected to add a microphone to the, to the scene in OBS, and so it didn't have any sound associated with it, which is really sucky because it was actually a pretty good video. Um, I actually cut the plastic from these boxes. So these boxes have gone, been gone through once, but they've been repackaged exactly as they were. So you're going to experience it again, and as am I. Uh, so I want to kind of give, this, give you guys an idea about what's in Folklore the Affliction. Um, I'm very excited about this game. It is actually the nice thing about this, which is what I love, is that it is a game designed for one to five players with 60 to 90 minutes, and it's designed for ages 14 and up. So the nice thing is this is actually a solo game. Um, and because you're playing this against the game, against the, the characters and the, uh, the non-player characters in the game, it's a collaborative game in the same way that like Pandemic or some of those other games are. I really am enjoying that model of game, of board game, a lot more than I am things like Monopoly or Sorry or Risk or any of that stuff. I, I do love an Axis and Allies game. Um, <clears throat> although it takes forever to set up. And I do have Succession Wars from Battletech, which is a board game for the Battletech universe. But uh, I really do prefer the collaborative games, the games that are going to let us play as a team against the game rather than against each other. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's start off with the base set, which is the Folklore the Affliction box. So here's this. And the first thing we're going to do is pull the cover off. Oh, do you feel it? Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Ah, oh, there it is. There's the box lid. Okay. Ooh, and inside it's just the box cover. All right. <laughs> no great surprise there. All right. So let's go ahead and put that down. And let's go ahead and jump right in. So inside, um, and I believe this is because this is turned this way, are is, is the rule book uh, and several other things. So we'll go through this. Here's the rule book explaining how everything's going to work. Here is the story journal. Now, the story journal has all of the information about the quests and stuff that you're going to play. So it has things like, uh, so here's the vile oak. And then uh, the vile oak says, uh, after hours stumbling in the dark, the trees begin to thin. You know, So it gives you a, an encounter, and it tells you what map to use, what to put where on the map, where you start, what happens in the game. So the nice thing is that you're kind of getting a feel for uh, a little bit about how this might be played. So it's in essence, it's a miniatures game with collaboratively against the game as opposed to against a DM. So this is your DM in essence. All right. We also have, so we have some stuff here. We've got uh, some of these punch outs here for... We've got some portcullises and some double doors. We've got some rubble. There's a candle. There's a wraith, a bat swarm, and I'm not sure what this guy is. And then we've got on the other side. Oh wait, there's the, then there's then there's this, which is there's a it looks like a bunch of um, uh, like uh, torch orbs in a way. I miss some magic orbs, some books. Uh, you've got colossal oak, an angry mob, an an Otherian. Uh, angry mob, abomination, and then on the back you've got the other things. You've got afflictions, creatures. Uh, looks like just the same thing from both sides, for at least for the rebel and the and the these things. But this is saying darkness for the bat. So oh, for so if you've got a candle, then it's you've got light. But if you don't have the candle, then it's darkness, which is melee. You have a minus five might, ranged minus ten might. So it does impact all of those things that you can do. 
uh, if you don't, don't have that stuff. And then what it looks like we've got here is a Han Solo Frozen and Carbonite, um, which is kind of funny. I don't, I'm not sure what that is, but it kind of looks like Han Solo Frozen and Carbonite. All right, so there's that one. And then here's this one, some more uh, punch out things. Looks like we've got different kinds of creature, or maybe different factions or something. I'm not sure. Oh, wait, here we go. Spirit of Wine, Vitriol, Wooden Shield, Boons, Corrosives. Okay, well, it looks like it's maybe just effects, or, um, effects that are in different areas. Uh oh, I punched one out. Oh, no. Gotta be careful about that. Okay, so there's that. And then next is this guy, which has more punch outs. So this is punch out sheet number three. And these are uh, targeting wanted signs, can't use town services. Oh, okay, so if you're wanted, you can't use town services. That's interesting. Uh, flames, so looks like there's some area of effect stuff here too. So some really kind of cool stuff there. Then we have, here's the different ones for the creatures and for the characters. So the characters are up here in the upper uh, right you can see here you've got uh, an arcanist, the archaeologist. I think it's the, what does that say? It says avenging madman, the exorcist, the telepath, the witch hunter. So you've got these different character um, uh, stand-ups that you can use, but you've also got vampire, and you've got rabid wolves, and you've got witch hunter, and bruja, Nosferatu. Oh, no. Na Necaratu. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't realize it. And a poltergeist. So you've got all these different um, characters and these these punch out and you put them onto stands and stuff like that. So now some of these are going to be taken over by the miniatures that I have in here. We'll talk through those, kind of show that a little bit. But it does on the back have a list of what miniatures are included. I'll actually um, maybe leave that up a little bit so you guys can freeze frame it if you want to and get a better picture of it but that's what's in here is some really cool stuff actually um but we'll get to that in a minute okay then we have uh, this which is our locations for our battlefields for our encounters and such and so you've got like a little church area here looks like it's a graveyard there i actually have seen that one played before uh, you've a cool crypt thing and then a little meandering path. Uh, we've got just grassy land and then something, some internal kind of, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's a cave structure of some kind, some sort of uh, throne room or area, and then, and then a large uh, area for um, a study, it looks like. Here's a road with an accident. If, you, <laughs> if you're playing a Kingdom Come, then you come upon an accident, and that looks like that's an accident there. And then on the back side, it's uh, someone's large uh, room for uh, divination or summoning or something. And then another building entrance, and then more underground stuff. Uh, looks like, oh, it kind of looks like the inside of what Stonehenge would have been like in a way. And then, oh, there's that. That, uh, that looks like it's, uh, let me get a catafalque or something, maybe for the, it's a, a, a cover for the, uh, for, a, for our tomb. Okay, and then we've got this, which also is just, you know, very coffin laden. And this guy, I'm not sure what he is, just some under, underground dwelling of some kind. And then this, which it looks very interesting. And then uh, we have the here. Nice little thing coming across there. And then looks like maybe uh, a corner of a, some kind of a, a parapet or something. And then you've got another underground cavern kind of space. So those are the base locations that you'll be uh, doing encounters in, which is kind of cool. A nice mixture there. And on the corner of you have every of every sheet it has the identifier so you'll know exactly what identify what, what sheets to use for which encounters seal this guy back up and then we have the stuff on the inside here which is this is all the rest of the stuff inside of it now there's two things here one is this is the game board which is actually where you are traveling around i'll show you this in a second and then there's all the other stuff that we have here including 
our uh, character sheets. This tells us all about our characters, and I'll show you those in a little bit. And then we've got dice and uh, some um, monster cards and other stuff. So we'll get into that in a second. But first, let's talk about the map. So when you are playing, you're actually traveling around some location in Eastern Europe or some such, and, you know, Transylvania, that kind of thing. And so you've got this as your map. Sorry, Pikachu, I don't mean to block your view there. Uh, and you can see that you've got a whole bunch of different locations. And these are all different towns, and you can travel between the towns. And what you do is you sort of start one of these places, and then you have to travel around. But as you go from town to town, you can collect, you can avail yourself of the town services and stuff. But you also might say, hey, go to the Standing Stones, or go to... Uh, the Felleron Crypts, or go to the Alchemist down here, or to the Bone Isle. So uh, there's a whole bunch of different I, uh, places on here. There's three towns, Yorotrusk, Wayland Point, and Ostelink. And then there's other places that are sort of more, um, I was what would you say, sort of dungeony areas where you're going to go do more of your stuff. Now the nice thing is that your character can persist from adventure to adventure, so you can actually grow your adventurer, your character into a, a stronger uh, character and have better chances of survival, that kind of stuff. So um, now we have, hmm, looks like a tracker of some kind. Now I did get something else in here and I don't see it immediately available. I'll have to go find it. Um, but it was one of these things and it was actually in metal. It was really kind of cool, but I don't know where I got, I don't know where I got off to. So anyway, these are power ghost point trackers. So here's this one, the power ghost point tracker. And on the back, it says a Vita tracker or a Vita tracker. I think it's V, I, I would say Vita. If it's, if it's uh, Latin, classical Latin, then it would be Vita, but power ghost, more power ghost, more Vita trackers. And then we've got another, and then lower in the deck, we've got uh, left for tracker. And left foe tracker, sorry, left foe tracker. And it's on the same on both sides. Hmm, interesting, okay. Well, there you are then. All right, and that's what that is. So I don't know how those are used yet. We'll find out. So um, I do also want to um, do, a, do a, a video of actual gameplay so you guys can kind of see how this actually plays out. Uh, I like to do that with more than myself, but I don't suspect that's going to happen. So uh, be on the lookout for that. I will be posting that up on the channel when that comes available. Let's go ahead and open up our uh, character cards so you can see what our characters are like. All right, so we have several different characters. We've got... Here, the Arcanist. And then we have our Archaeologist. And the Avenging Madman. They killed your family, now you must get them. Uh, Exorcist, which is right there. And then we have the Telepath. And the Witch Hunter. I think that's the last one. Witch Hunter. Okay. Cool, yeah. Yes. Okay, and then on the back, it actually has information. So this is the Arcanist card. And on the back, it has information about, you know, what their abilities are, what their location extras are, that kind of stuff. So uh, as apparently as you, you know, as your character goes along, you can do different things. So the Avenging Madman starts with a bail hook, as an example. And uh, you can, it tells you a little bit about the different uh, characters and what their abilities are so you get to pick ones that resonate most with you which is kind of nice all right next we have the dice and some looks like some chips on here i don't know what they are for that's a very good question so here are our dice there's a standard set it looks like there's uh four-sided uh lots of tens and a couple of sixes there's a couple of fours uh, lots of tens of different shapes and uh, different uh, colors, including one that's actually two that are actually marked as uh, tens digits. You can see here it says, you know, there's 80. And then there's also, uh, but the other ones, the reds and the whites are all uh, just regular 10. And then there's a set of black ones, black tens that are just regular tens as opposed to the uh, 10, 20, 30s. So, hmm, okay, there we are then. 
And then we also have this, which is, oh, hello, that's fascinating, hold on. We have this, which is just a bunch of little uh, black, oh, these are the stands, these black stands, never mind. And then we have this, I don't know what this is, it's just a bunch of little white cubes. There we are. Uh, there's five of them. And then there's this, which I think is us. So there's there's us, I think, on the map. So I think it donates it denotes where our um, where our characters are, where our party is in the game. On the board. Alright. Okay, let's seal that guy back up as well. Dun dun dun. And let's go ahead and take a look at the the monster cards here real quick. Once I get this guy sealed up, hold on. Alright, there we are. Alrighty. Monster cards. Here they are. Monster cards. It says bat swarm on top. So we have a bat swarm. Now there's two different there's just two sides to this. There's the there's this one that says bat swarm, which I think is an encounter. Then there's also this one which is called skirmish. And I think that's if you stumble upon it sort of like a random encounter as opposed to a predetermined event. So I think there's a vent card and then there's just oh I randomly stumbled upon a bat swarm. So we've got bat swarm and dark oak and hold on a second here and then the decaying dead. That's kind of like a nice picture there. I like that. And then flesh eating ghouls, gargoyle, highwayman, an angry mob. Look they've got torches and pitchforks. Uh, mad Druid, as opposed to just a slightly irked Druid. A Moon Priest, <clears throat> the Night Stalker. I thought that was supposed to be uh, uh, Darren McGavin. Wait, okay, I'm, I really dated myself with that one. Uh, Rabid Wolf, and if you don't know, go look up Night Stalker, McGavin, you'll find it. Um, very, actually, interesting set of TV show, of uh, series from the 1970s. Restless Spirits. The Strega, I'm not sure that's how you pronounce that. I'll have to look that up. An Undertaker, he's to, here to take you under. Okay. And the Vampire, okay, Vampire. Then we also have a Vicious Hound. Okay, and then a Watchman, because we can't just possibly, you know, not deal with regular people. Werewolf, all right. And then, oh, hold on a second, there's a whole bunch of other stuff on the other side here. That I want to try to get to. So there looks like... Alright, then there's a thing called a Blood Priest. The Bruja. Um, hold on a second. Uh, the Imp. And these, are all, these are all marked as skirmish cards on the, on, as, as it's coming out of the deck. The Infested. That's kind of interesting. Uh, the Nekoratu. I like his... Uh, Puffy shirt. We sure it's not Kramer. A poltergeist. A revenant. A skinwalker. Oh look, it's Team Jacob. Tainted saplings. The white wolf. Okay, and then these are our character cards. Here's the arcanist, and then you can see her. This is the information on this side. It says things like. Uh, starting equipment is a stiletto, a bandage, and, and a ritual. And then she has special abilities and keywords. And then it has some information about her stats on the, on the side here. And then on the back, it has more information. It says ghosts have the ethereal status. And it shows energy drain. And this looks like it's, if she's some, something else here, these look like they're like evil arcanist kind of thing. Because here's a regular picture. And she's all in color, and here she is as a as a ghostly being. Hmm, okay. An archaeologist. And again, here he is as a ghostly being. And then the Avenging Madman. I think you can see his... Uh, no, you can't in that picture because they blocked it. But he actually has a, uh, a bail hook in his, his left hand. The Exorcist. That's a much better picture of the Exorcist. Here's the Telepath. Um, and again, all these have the backside, which is that sort of ghostly thing. We'll figure out what that means later on. Here's the Witch Hunter. And then we have the Book of Dark Dimensions, otherwise known as the Necronomicon. No. A Colossal Dark Oak. Now this card, like the, the Book of Dark Dimensions, is just a, a single side. So 
something uh, it is obviously very ominous from that perspective same thing with the colossal dark oak it has nothing on the back uh, the fear far east alchemist is also a one-off galastig galastig is there orinth is here Othirian. okay and then we got an abomination Vagliani and the Wraith. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so there we go. So that's what's in there. Plus, there's a couple more cards at the very end here, which are how to adventure. There's a whole little thing about how to skirmish. Um, there's encounters with characters and ghosts and creatures and afflictions. So it tells you about how to play these things. Here's the statuses. Here's your positive statuses and negative statuses. And then here are the town services that are available in each of the towns. So, so you can kind of figure out you know, what you can do when you go to those towns. So that's kind of cool. So as I said, let's take a look at this and we play it for real. Um, and again, since it is one, two, five, five players, then we can actually get quite a few people playing, which will be kind of cool. So, all right. And we've got three more decks in here, three little small decks. Here's deck one number one. Is this, this, is this set of guys? These are road events, it looks like. And then there's two other decks. Uh, I think they're a combination of items and abilities and stuff. So let's take a look at the road events real quick. Just see what that looks like. All right, so you guys are getting a little bit of a taste here of how this game is structured. Now, this is from Greenbrier Games. They're an indie game house. They did a Kickstarter for this game. Uh, they had a, they had the ideas. They had actually been doing the game for a while uh, as a sort of a local play kind of thing, and they decided to go ahead and actually do a mass production of it, and so that's why they did the Kickstarter. And I backed it thinking, this is, looks kind of cool. So... All right, so this looks like there's two different decks in this pack. So this large pack has two different sort of sub-decks inside of here. So this one is off-road events, and then it gives you some choices. And you can say, oh, if you go to choice one or choice two, then you do certain things. So here it says, um, as we listened to, the, to, a, to their song, a drowsiness came, on, came upon us. So all characters must pass nerve six to resist... Uh, the satyr's music okay and then choice two is something else that happens so there's a whole bunch of little events here these are all off-road events so there's the night lights there's innocence lost disturbed earth outraged pan pipes the dark right a coven a whole bunch of little off-road events and then we have it looks like road events and the road events are things like the Snake Whisperer and Campsite and Death Himself and I'll take Deathly Hallows for seven for six six hundred Alex uh, Manor the Militia Samaritan so you find a whole bunch of different things sort of on the road so different sets of events for the different things whether you're going to be on the road or off the road so that's kind of cool all right so we'll go ahead and put those back in the bag. Okay, dun dun dun, excelente, okay. And then we have these two decks. I'll open up this one first. This one says ability on the outside, but I think there's multiple sub decks in here as well. So again, I think this is one of those we just simply stacked a whole bunch of different same sized cards in the same bag kind of thing. So what do we have here? We have ability and that takes up a good uh, probably two thirds of the deck. These ability cards and abilities are let's see the Arcanist run runic dice, the telepath psychic implosion. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of the information about it. Just kind of tells you a little bit about that about that ability. So these are I'm guessing going to be what we're going to use for the characters but there's also other things there's there's some other ones that i think that we can get during the course of our adventures so there's pretty su substantial stuff here that's kind of cool all right and then oops hello get back on there all right and then we have let's see what else we have here then we have companion animals oh cool there's a snow owl there you go neat okay so it can be a companion animals a whole bunch of different things and we have some prayers uh, that's one right there. I don't know what that says. It says you pray for your allies to be cleansed of all of illness. Remove the sickened status from all infection tokens from the group. Cool. Uh, here's another prayer. And it says 
Uh, healing Surge. All characters recover 2d4 Vita or 1d6 Ghost Points. Nice. So, okay, so those are prayer cards. And that's just what the back of the prayer card looks like. So you can kind of see that. Um, and here's the back of the companion animal card looks like too. So you can see that as well and kind of see it. it's kind of a neat little companion animal thing there. Okay. Then we have rituals. Now this is what like the Arcanist has. So she's got ritual cards there. That's what the back of the ritual card looks like. And then this one says, dun, dun, dun. Oh, that's a little too close. It says all foes in combat receive reduction to for four, for four rounds. So different kinds of rituals. Um, and then it looks like there's some items at the very end of this. Okay, so there's all those. And then here's, here's the back of the item card. Okay, kind of cool. And this item is a whip. Or as Stewie would say, a whip. I guess, yeah, it's only cool whip that he says that with. But anyway, so they have a whip. They've got the a flying disc. So we're going to make Xena, I guess. Anyway, so that's those. So that's kind of cool. All right. Some, some interesting things there. I need to see how that plays out during the game. And we have one more set, and this is just in the base deck, the base box. So uh, hopefully the other boxes will go faster. Well, certainly the miniatures box will go faster because it's just a bunch of plastic creatures. All right, there's that. Get this guy sealed up because we're already at 26 minutes. <laughs> we haven't quite gotten through the rest of the box yet. Here. Okay, so. That guy there, can I put these guys like here or something? Let's see, I'm just trying to figure out how I package this the first time. I don't know how. I'm so confused. Okay. All right, hold on a second here. Oh, killing me, Smalls. There we go. All right, and then here, oops, we've got more items. So lots more items. Lots more items. Like practically the entire deck, I would say maybe like 80% of it is more item stuff like an onk of life you can see the onk of life there yep there you go so that, that kind of stuff so it has it has a whole bunch more items in it yay but then it has artifacts which is kind of cool so here's the artifacts the back isn't very exciting but this also has this this is kind of interesting artifact the ring of moonlight that's kind of cool so anyway so some some artifacts there but then this is kind of neat. As someone who used to read these when I was younger, this is kind of cool. The Fool. It's a tarot deck. And here's your tarot cards on the back. So you can see it just says tarot. But they've got the Fool. They've got the Hermit. They've got the Chariot. They've got Death, number 13. Um, we've got the Hanged Man, number 12. There he is. So... Anyway, so these are just the tarot. I don't know what the tarot are for. The Empress. They don't have the Magician, though. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Well, there you are, then. The Wheel of Fortune. Okay, cool. So, lots of cool stuff. All right. And these all go back in the bag. And then, like I said, this whole thing right here is just all items. These are... Every single one of these is just other items that they've added to the game. That's, that's pretty impressive. That's quite a lot of stuff that they have there. Okay. All right. So, that is the base Folklore box set, okay? So if you get Folklore the Affliction, that is what you're gonna get in the box. So, hope you enjoyed that. I'm not gonna bother reboxing all this stuff before I just simply jump into the next set of things here because I wanna get you guys on to the next thing. So let's do that, shall we? Okay, can I do that? Is that gonna work? All right, uh, not quite. I'll figure this out. It's all good, man. All right. And take this stuff and floppy flop into the box. And we're done for now. Excellent. All right, hold on. Ugh. All right. Yes. One down. Cheers. Oh, goodness. Okay. Let's jump into the miniatures. So the miniatures, it has quite a few uh, different ones in here, including some basic ones. I mean, I'll show it up here again. You can see it's just got some stuff like it's got the Undertaker, the Vicious Hound. So it has all the basic um, creatures and characters from the base set. Uh, it has the Archfiend. It has an Abomination. It's got the the Bananach. The, the 
Do 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 do. Banana knock. Do 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 do. Banana knock. Do 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 do. Banana knock. Okay. All right. But here are our regular ones. Now it has um, some of these gray ones. There's, there's there's a mixture in here of. Hopefully I can untangle those guys. Jeez. There we go. Has these kind of guys, which are like this light green or the grayish green. But then they have these guys, which are actually gray. And I believe that's our witch hunter. Um, so you can kind of see the uh, the quality of the detail on these guys. is actually pretty impressive. Um, these are really pretty good. Now these are all plastic, so they're not um, very... Uh, what was the word I'm looking for? Uh, customizable. I mean, I'm not sure you can play, really paint them very effectively, but, you know, uh, maybe you could. There's an infected. Uh, it's kind of cool. So, anyway, there's a bunch of these. There's a wolf. Rawr, rawr, rawr. I'm going to get you. Okay. And then uh, there's more of, the guy, more of the characters here. So here's, uh, I'm not sure who that is. But that's a guy. It's a dude. And here's a dude. Another dude. Hold on. Boy, these guys are really, really want to just, like, stay connected to each other. This guy's got a whip. That's kind of cool. Look, it's Indiana Jones. Okay. And then... That's that's another of our characters, I believe. Okay. So, anyway. So, some, uh, some interesting guys with a whole bunch of different characters. And this is the base... Uh, creatures from the set. And then we kind of get into the cooler stuff. <clears throat> I'll just put those on the floor because it takes forever to package these guys back up again. For some reason, um, this guy in particular and these two guys in particular are really, really hard to prepackage. But they're really awesome. I mean, look at those characters. That's, that's pretty awesome. The, the, the detail on the wings on the back here is, yeah, it's pretty good. And then here's his here's his backside. His spiky tail. It's kind of like almost uh, like a flail tail kind of thing. So anyway, anyway, so some of these. Uh, and here's here's the abomination. Yes, there's that's the abomination. You can see how huge he is as compared to like one of the other characters. So it that's nice because it kind of gives you an idea of the relative sizes of these things, and you're like, uh, do we really want to take this guy out or not? <laughs> Is that something we can do, should do? I don't know. I'm not sure who that dude is, but he looks kind of cool. Okay. So, anyway, all the bigger ones in here. Oh, look, it's Nyarlathotep. Reading a book. <laughs> all right. And then they have these. These are like demonic flame or something, uh, as I recall. So, they are, yes, demonic flares. Flares, they are. Okay, anyway, so like I said, quite a few different little things, and there's, oh, here's, oh, check that oak out. That's kind of cool. I'm going to eat you. Okay, cool. All right. So anyway, so those are the, these are the larger of the um, uh, uh, figures that came with the game, and you can see, I mean, they're gigantic. They really take up a large space on the, on the, on the, the on those grids, those maps. So uh, it's going to be, you can kind of get a feel for, holy hand, that thing is really, really big. So uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. Might be a lot of run away, run away in my future, I think, with those games. Okay, alrighty. So that's those two. Now, let's get into Folklore of the Affliction, Dark Tales expansion. So there are actually multiple expansions that are uh, available. I think there's two available right now. Uh, the plan, I think, is to have another one available in the not too distant future. The if as I mean, if they get the base game and they get it built and everything else like that, then adding expansions is just simply it's a creative process. But in essence, they've built the pipeline so they can probably kick kick these things out pretty easily. Now the challenge, of course, is you're not going to have any mini fakes for this, like the miniatures that I bought. That set is not going to exist for this stuff. So here's the folklore for the affliction journey. Journey and Journal, the Story Journal 2 for Dark Tales. And again, it kind of goes through and explains, you know, if you're here, then you do these things. And here's the map to use and that kind of stuff. And it tells you, here's your primary goals, here's your optional goals. The yellows say primary goal and an optional goal. So you can kind of get a feel for what um, what the what you're trying to do here, how to set up the maps. And there's, a, hey, look, there's a new artifact available. So that's kind of cool. Some neat stuff there. And then... 
we get into the box itself. And here's the box. So you can see it's got the same kind of punch outs as before. It's got some maps from before and it's got some more stands and some more characters, which is actually kind of cool, along with more items and stuff. So I don't want to go through the whole thing, but I will kind of go through a little bit of this just so you can kind of get a feel for it. What's here and what might be different from the other folklore things. So it looks like, yeah, we've added one, two, three, four, five, six more class, six more characters, which is great. So we've got the butcher, the courtesan, the illusionist, the scientist, the slaver, and the woodsman. So um, you know, you're going across, you've got these different characters available. You've also got all these other characters um, that we can play with. And then you've got on the back, I mean, so you can see actually here, it has the, the ghost form versions of those guys. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know what the ghost form version is doing, but there you are. Um, but we've added some other things here. We now we have the possessed here. We've got uh, demons spawn, I guess. I guess that's what that's like. What that guy is. We've got um, here's some demonic flames. Here's Trosgu. I guess these are some of the more major characters in the game uh, that you're going to be fighting. So there's that. And then here's some more of these things. So just some, here's some more big guys. Um, looks like we've got a doppelganger, a wood mother, the arch fiend, the banana. It's the banana. That's what it is. Let's see. Banana. So I guess we do actually have that as part of our miniature box set. It actually includes the dark tail stuff. So that's, that's, I, hey, bonus. I didn't realize that. And then a lich. Cool. All right. And then a bunch of other cogs to take out. All right. Then we have this, which is interesting because they've introduced not just more of these large sheets, which are here. Um, so here's all these guys, you know, so here's, you know, this guy's covered in flame, and then there's that. Oh, it's a sarcophagus. That's really cool. Look at that. Let's check out that sarcophagus. That's kind of neat. All right. Anyway, so you've got this, and this guy, and there's that back to it. Um, so it looks like, oh, wow, that looks kind of uh, not so good for anybody if you're trying to get across that. You shall not pass. Okay. And then we have this guy and the back of that, and then, oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. That's that's just a really interesting uh, visual there. And then there's some outdoor stuff and some more outdoor stuff. They've added a lot of uh, maps to this. There's this and then that guy. Cool. And a little marketplace. Nice. And then a little space there. Cool. I love this one. I just love the uh, refracting, the, the stained light coming through. That's just so cool. And then there's that. Back back to it. So, yeah. And then it's like a foundry of some kind. Cool. And then the back is just a, an outdoor thing. And we've got uh, it's like some sort of scriptorium and then a, a dock. And some other scriptorium type places and then the inside of a, uh, a little a circle stone circle entryway and then the back is more docks and then the tavern and a graveyard okay so that's those are the big ones so they've added you know several quite I mean, that, that's a substantial number right there of uh, new maps to it but they've also added all of these guys and so I'm really curious because, you know, this guy is like that big. I mean, and here's the other side of it. I mean, so you can see it's like, what, two, four, it's like maybe, you know, seven squares to fit in. I mean, and then here's another one that's like that. And then there's this guy. It looks like there's a bed there uh, at the top. And then some sort of storeroom. And then there's that side. So they've got this and they've got some, then they have some, some larger ones that are just, but they're not as big as the other ones. So they just, they're, they're really experimenting here with different sized spaces. And then a hallway. <laughs> I mean, we've got two hallways here. Here's, here's this hallway. Here's that hallway. I mean, just two totally different kinds of uh, environments there, but that's kind of cool. Here's this one. 
That's kind of cool. It's got some uh, couches on the side. Oh, yes. I'll be walking across that. Not. <clears throat> and then uh, here's another. And then here's a slightly larger one. With a slightly larger one as well. And then a bearskin rug. That's someone's, that's someone's house. And then the other side of that. Looks like a, 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 what do you call it? A barracks or a dormitory of some kind. So, like I said, you know, they just have a really interesting um, addition here with these different sized spaces, which, again, I think is going to be really interesting to see what kinds of things happen with that. So, all right. Let's just see if there's anything really new in the other stuff other than the characters, which will be the six new characters that we can play, which are kind of cool. All right, there we go. Bum, bum, bum. More stands. No great surprise there. I'm not going to open those for you because that's just kind of pointless. All right, but here's this. Here's our characters. And our characters we have, aha, uh -huh, we have a butcher. Okay, so that's kind of cool. And then we have the courtesan. And then we have the illusionist. We've talked about these guys already. Um, but... It looks like, um, yeah, so like the illusionist, here we go. He gets a cane sword as his special item. So and then he has a, the illusionist disappearing act and Valance jolt. So he gets uh, two abilities to start the game with. Then we have uh, the scientist. And that's who we saw. That's who I couldn't identify from the character set for the miniatures. I'm like, I, this is a character, but I don't know who it is. It was the scientist. A slayer. That should be Buffy. So there's our Sir Michelle Geller. Or, Kirst, or Christy Swanson, depending on how old you are. And then uh, our woodsman. So, and uh, that's... Um, God, who played the woodsman? I don't remember who played the woodsman. I'll put it in the description. But someone played the woodsman. Uh, well, Chris Hemsworth, in the most recent one. But lots of people have played the, 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 uh, the woodsman. So anyway. So there's our characters. And then we have more road events. Oh, it did not seal up. Hold on a second. Good Lord, stop. All right. Aha. There we are. Much better. Okay. And then we have our big old stack of stuff. Now, this introduces something new, it looks like, which is something called an heirloom. I'm intrigued by this. This is much smaller than the other decks, the other, these other small card decks that we got from the, the base set. The base set is probably about... A third again, maybe a quarter larger than these. So this is a little bit smaller. But we have an heirloom now. So here's an heirloom that we can get. And then, so here's a pocket clock watch. Your timing is impeccable. Receive plus one stride. Cool. All right. So those are our heirlooms. We get a whole bunch of different things. And they've added some artifacts, some more artifacts as well. So like, here's an artifact, which is the Spirit Blade. All right, hold on a second. I want to see what that one says. It says, one-handed, two four-sided dice, plus one. Okay, oh, that's kind of cool. So it tells you how much damage to do by how, what dice to roll by showing you what dice to roll. Lots of artifacts. So hold on a second here, I'll show you. Oh, we have, there's just a couple more items as well. I'm guessing that these are for the, um, the new characters. So like here's the long knives. Um... Here's the cleaver, which is another guy that we saw in the the uh, the miniatures pack that I, I didn't know what it, who he was. Uh, but here's some artifacts, and then these are the artifacts, which is probably this is probably about twice as big a uh, thick as the other stack was. So I'm uh, kind of intrigued to see what happens with that. And then, ooh, companion militia. So here is a trapper, as an example. So you instead of having companion animals, we can have companion militias. They did also add a couple more companion animals. There's a shadow hawk. I'll take the shadow hawk. It's a 55 ton mech with an AC5. I think I would win. <laughs> and an Abyssinian cat. Um, so yeah, so some cool stuff there. All right. So then there's those, and then we have more abilities that popped up. So here's another ability: spirit walk. Uh, seance, uh, exorcism, into the heart, slayer ability. Okay, so a bunch of different new abilities for the 
new characters. So awesome. That's fabulous. Okay, cool. So we'll put these guys back. Dun, dun, dun. All right. There we are. Okay. And then our, uh, let's go ahead and open up these guys here. So here we go. Shadow Lord. Ooh, he looks, that's who that is. So that dude that I said, boy, he's kind of cool. Who is he? He's a Shadow Lord. There you are. So ask and you shall receive. Okay, so here's a Shadow Lord, uh, an Arch Fiend, the b banana. Do, 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 do. banana. The Doppelganger. It's the Vesuvian Doppelganger. Okay. Uh, the Empusai Coven. Cool. As a Lich. The Wood Mother. And these are all, again, these sort of major characters from the game, so they only have the one side. But then you've got the character sheets for the Butcher, uh, the Courtesan, the Illusionist, the Scientist, the Slayer, and Chris Hemsworth, i.e. Thor. And then we have the Banshee, uh, Dark Dryad. And again, because these guys are just regular character, regular creatures, they have both the skirmish side and the regular side. And again, when we get into the play, we do the actual gameplay, then I will um, uh, talk about the differences there. There's our Demonic Flame. Here's our Hands of Death. Ah! The Demon Spawn. The Possessed. Oh, look. It's uh, Samara. And the Wretched Hag. Okay, there we go. Excellent. So there we go for those we only have one more set of cards to look at real quick and then we're all done looking at folklore the affliction and the dark tales expansion pack which is kind of cool i gotta say um i'm really looking forward to this game i ordered this uh probably oh god almost a year ago i think now uh kickstarted it about a year ago and I thought, oh, that'll be great. It's coming out in July. It's my birthday. So I'll do an early birthday present for myself. And then it arrived in like the end of October. So anyway, so here's our road events. Um, so this is what the road event back looks like. Uh, same as the other, other one. And then you've got, here's our different road event. So like this one is uh, Peddler, Crossroads, it's night. So if it's daytime, then it's a Peddler. If it's night, then it's the Crossroads. And so you do the different things based upon what time of day it is and then you've got these other off-road events and i'm guessing these are the regular road of uh, nope these are something else entirely hold on a second all right so we've got some some new events for this and then we have this some personal quests that's kind of cool commerce pick up supplies at a way at wayland point so this is really interesting. So this is Carnage in the Sewers. I, I don't know what these guys are. These are, well, here's the other side of it. So you guys can see this. That's kind of interesting. Um, come on, focus. 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 Right, there you go. All right. Um, so there's a little, uh, apparently, some kind of a little uh, event that you do and it actually lays out everything right there for you on the card wow um yeah so obviously a game for teens because older people don't have that kind of vision <laughs> it didn't come with a magnifying glass oh that is fascinating it's a rumor card look stevie nicks and fleetwood mac okay no that's not Rumor instructions. Oh, it tells you about rumors. It tells you about how to use these cards. Cool. Okay, so that's what that's what this is. That's what these are. These are rumors. All right. Awesome. Fabulous. So, that, my friends, is Folklore: The Affliction, the base game, the Dark Tales expansion, and the pack. Let me put up the picture, the box lid again, so you guys can see it. So this is the game. Uh, Greenbrier Games is the one who did it. That's these guys down actually it's right here you can barely make it out right there but greenbrier games is the name b-r-i-e-r -E um i will put a link to their website uh in the description so go ahead and check them out uh i'm very excited about this uh, this is looking very 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 cool uh i love the fact that it is um 
uh, that you can do solo play. I love the fact that it is really high quality stuff. I mean, I'm not looking at this going, wow, this is like the cheapest they could have possibly made this. This is really pretty good stuff. Now, I did Kickstarter it. I did pay a little bit extra to you know get something that was going to be uh, slightly better I wouldn't say quality, but slightly, uh, you know, better stuff out of it. And, uh, but I have to say that I'm really impressed. The um, medallion that I got, I actually got as part of my Kickstarter, I got a, a, a metal medallion that is this image uh, as a, a pretty substantial chunk of metal, which was kind of cool. So uh, I'll have to see if I can find that and maybe we'll add that to our background somewhere. So. Just real quick reminder, uh, Mondays, we're trying to do, I'm trying to do this, and I'm seeing how this is going to work. I don't know right now. This is sort of an experiment still. Um, it's, I'm finding it more challenging to do it than not do it, so I'm trying to figure out what makes the most sense. But uh, Monday nights, I'm trying to do Mech Warrior Monday, where we're playing the Battletech campaign from beginning through end. Once that ends, then I'll be doing just regular Battletech stuff and doing some tips and tricks. We'll be playing the mods that I've got, which include opening up the Inner Sphere and a bunch of other stuff, uh, so we can actually play all over the Inner Sphere, which is kind of cool. We do Way Back Wednesday, where we play old school games. Last time we played uh, World of Zine, which was uh, working-ish. Uh, the challenge there, of course, is that it doesn't. there's some problems and it, it crashes quite a bit with DOSBox, which is kind of annoying. Then we do, uh, every other Friday, we do FPS Friday. And I did two FPS Fridays in a row because we had one week was the Black Ops 4, uh, no, it was Battlefield 5, the uh, beta, the private beta for that. And that was freaking awesome. I love that. It is such a visually stunning game. They did such a good job with it. Uh, I'm just really impressed. And then, uh, the, then the next week was the Black Ops 4 Blackout private beta. So I played that as well. And uh, anyway, so that we do that on Fridays, or we do Fallout Friday. And Fallout 76, of course, is coming around the corner. I do have the private, I do have the beta access that I'll be getting once the beta is available next month. So just a couple more weeks uh, until we uh, until that's supposed to be out, and then we'll be playing that a lot, so you guys can get a feel for what Fallout 76 is gonna be like when you guys play it for real for yourselves. Uh, anyway, so hope that helps. Uh, the uh, schedule is uh, actually on my Mixer site. If you go to mixer.com slash gizmo DeVoe, and you can see at the bottom I've got um, the gizmo DeVoe. I'm at gizmo DeVoe pretty much everywhere. So if you just look for me, gizmo DeVoe, on any of those sites, YouTube, gaming, Twitch, Mixer, Twitter even, uh, Facebook, then that's where I am. Anyway, uh, I'll be doing a lot of that stuff, and we'll hopefully catch you on the other side. Until then, cheers. Mm-mm-mm. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Thanks.